Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss um, how to solve quadratic equations and why exactly we do it using the factoring method and why that method works. So we're actually going to begin with a really simple equation that's not a quadratic, uh, just a simple equation like 3x plus uh, 12 is equal to 0. Now, that equation is very simple for us to solve using basic algebra. The objective is to isolate the x. We subtract 12 from both sides. We're left with 3x is equal to negative 12. And then since 3 is being multiplied by x, we divide both sides by 3. And we're left with x is equal to negative 4. And that equation is very easy to solve because we have just one single variable. And it, uh, we don't have any squareds. We don't have any cubes. We just have an x. So it's easy for us to just follow the steps to isolate that x. If we have a quadratic, though, you're going to find that you have an x squared and then an x. And therefore, any basic algebra that we do here is not really going to work to solve this because we're going to end up with x squared is equal to 6x minus 8. And if we try to square root that, just by using inverse operations, we end up with x is the square root of 6x minus 8. Now, that may be true. That doesn't give us a value. So instead, we have to come up with a uh, more creative way to solve for x. So seeing as we can't isolate the x individually and just get a number, we have to go back to our original idea of what does it mean to solve for x. And solving for x, quite simply, is just finding the value of x that makes that equation true. So if I were to just take a random number, let's say I put in 3 here for the x. And we get 9 minus 18 plus 8 uh, equals 0. And if we actually do that out, we'd end up with negative 1 equals 0, which isn't true. So we know that the 3 is no good. So obviously, we can do trial and error here until we're blue in the face. And eventually, we'll probably come up with the answer. Now let's think of the very uh, one of the very basic principles of math. If we take any number and we multiply that number by zero, we always get zero. Zero times six is zero. Zero times five thousand is zero. So we can conclude that zero times x, no matter what x is, is always zero. Now let's remember that rule, and let's remember that we're trying to find the value or values of x that make this equation true. If we can change this equation, which is currently a sum of three terms, into a product, and then determine the values of x that make each factor of that product equal to zero, then we'll have found our solution. How do we do that? Well, we factor the left side of the equation. And by factoring, we're going to change that from a sum to a product. So we're going to use a uh, sum product factoring here because this is a trinomial. So what we're going to do is we're going to find two numbers that add to negative 6 and multiply to positive 8. And those numbers are going to be negative 4 and negative 2. So I have changed this part of the equation here to this. So of course we have to still bring down the equals zero, otherwise we have changed the equation to something that's not an equation at all. And if we were to FOIL that out, the x minus 4 times x minus 2, we get x squared minus 2x minus 4x plus 8 equals zero. So that would give us back our original equation. But now let's return to this. Let's say we figure this out and we are left with x minus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0. Now, we still can't really isolate each individual x in this equation as it stands. But remember this rule here. Remember this premise that if we multiply anything by 0, then we get 0. And we're trying to find the values of x here that make this equation true. That is, that make that equation equal to zero. So if we were to find the value of x that makes x minus 4 equal to zero, which of course would be 4, 
If we were to then substitute back in this 4 for the x, we would get 4 minus 4 over here, which is 0, times 4 minus 2, and we get 0 times 2, which is 0. So we know that the 4 is a solution. Using that same logic, we can then do x minus 2 is equal to 0 and get x equals 2. And in this case, if we were to substitute in the 2 here and here, we get 2 minus 4, which is negative 2, times 0, and that would be equal to 0. So we have found the two values of x that make this equation true, without ever having to isolate the x in the equation as a whole. Let's take a look at another example. So this example is a bit more complicated, because you may have noticed I now have an x cubed. Now for the purposes of this initial video, we, we have all the equations already set equal to zero. If you have uh, an equation like this that features a quadratic uh, or higher power, you, you want to get it equal to zero first. So let's factor this. And the first thing you should notice is that we can take out an x here because there's an x in every term. So we can use the GCF factoring here, take out x. We're left with x times x squared plus 7x minus 8 is equal to zero. Now, we can continue on here and factor this further using the sum product rule. So the two numbers that uh, multiply to negative 8 but add to positive 7 are going to be x plus 8 and x minus 1. And again, we can check this on the side here. x times x plus 8 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, we can go ahead and uh, foil out the x plus 8 and x minus 1. And it actually doesn't matter what order you multiply it in. You could do x times x plus 8 first. But here we'll get x squared minus x plus 8x minus 8 is equal to 0. And what we'll get here is x squared plus 7x minus 8 is 0. And don't forget about this initial x. That hasn't gone anywhere. So then we distribute this out. Now all I'm doing here is just checking that these two equations are indeed exactly the same. So now you'll see that we don't just have two factors, we actually have three. And if any of those factors are equal to zero, then the whole thing is equal to zero, which is what we're trying to find. So take the x and set it equal to zero. Then take x plus eight and set it equal to zero and find the values of x that make that true. And then x minus one and set it equal to zero and find the values of x that make that true. Because as long as we can find the values of x that make any of these factors zero, then we'll find the values of x that make the whole equation zero. Of course, the first one's already solved for us. It's x equals zero. And look, if I put zero back in, I get zero times eight times negative one, and that's zero. So we have found a value of x that makes that true. You can put it back in the original as well, and you'll get zero plus zero minus zero. If we get x plus eight, is equal to zero, we subtract the eight from both sides, so x minus eight is another solution. Of course, that would make that second factor equal to zero. And if we do uh, plus one to both sides here, uh, we'll get x is equal to one, and of course, that will make the third factor equal to zero, which would also make the whole uh, equation equal to zero. Now, you'll note here that on the last problem, we had only uh, two solutions, here we have three solutions. And as a general rule, um, most of these equations are going to have the same number of solutions as the highest power. So here we have an x squared, so we can expect two solutions. Now that's not always true. Uh, sometimes you'll get one or sometimes you'll get zero. We'll get into that in another video. Uh, but don't be surprised if you get three solutions if your highest power is a three. Now, if you got three solutions for this equation, then you've probably made a mistake somewhere. So let's check out, uh, check out one last example for this video here. And uh, this one you'll see has a, an x squared. So you're likely to get two solutions. You may get one, you may get zero. If you get more than two, again, then you've probably made an error somewhere. So let's begin by taking out a GCF, which is three. And then use our sum product factoring. Excuse me. And I'm not going to go through to check on this one, but if you foil that back out, you will 
end up with the original equation once you distribute the 3. So I'm going to again set all of the factors equal to 0. These two should look like a very familiar step now. I'm going to subtract the 3. And that is one solution, because that would make this factor equal to 0. And uh, then here, that would make this factor equal to 0. Which again, in turn, since 0 times anything is 0, will uh, make the whole equation equal to 0. Now, we do have one other factor here, and that's a 3. A and I could, sort of as a formality, say 3 equals 0, but of course, we know that 3 doesn't equal 0. So we can reject that, because there's no value of x that will make this factor equal to 0. It's not possible. So we only have two factors here that will yield meaningful results. The third factor is just a number, since that number can never equal 0, no matter what, um, no matter what the value of x is, then that is irrelevant to our question, since we are looking for the values of x that make each factor equal to 0, and then by multiplying the factors out, 0 times anything is 0, that'll give us the whole equation equal to 0. Thank you for listening, and check out our other videos.